We are here today delivering, as always, the good news. In this segment, we engage with different role players of our society. Through their actions, they are making a difference within their community. Our guest today is Mr. Jared Petzer. Mr. Petzer is involved in an organization called Move One Million. How are you today, Mr. Petzer? I'm very well in yourself and uh, hello to all your viewers, uh, Rodrigo. Thanks, thanks. Kindly describe your organization and the role you play within it. Uh, sure. So Move One Million is a civil rights group. I, I'd say that we're probably one of the largest civil rights groups, if not the largest in South Africa currently. Um, we have a, a, a specific ethos, which is to focus on uh, active citizenry. And uh, as, as a, lot of, uh, a lot of people know, I'm sure that are watching South Africa is fraught with challenges. We've got a number of issues in our country. Uh, from political challenges to um, to socio-economic uh, development issues, which are really key and fundamental um, issues that we we like to focus on as an organisation. So our mandate is uh, is very simple. It's to it's to make sure that we can connect with as many um, communities, associations, organisations, and the general public, uh, and as well as anybody else that wants to be uh, involved and help us in participating in the restoration of some levels of dignity within our communities, uh, crossing, crossing any sort of um, divides that might exist as a, as a result of you know, historic um, structures that were put in place by the old government, which are still largely in place today. So there's a lot of work that needs to happen between the various races in South Africa, uh, and then really work towards trying to create some semblance of a, a, semblance of a, a functioning society. And we do a lot of that stuff through active citizenry, with a core fundamental focus on direct elections, which is a bill that's currently sitting in Parliament in South Africa, just waiting to be approved. And that bill will allow us to directly elect leadership in South Africa and to hold that leadership uh, to account, to full account, creating total transparencies and not allowing people to hide behind the closed party system, which is what we have in South Africa currently. We want to open that up. We want to make sure that people are elected based on meritocracy. Uh, based on what they know how to do, based on based on their, their ability to lead the nation and based on their, their willingness to serve the country and its people. And that's really what our, what, our, what our core drive is. It's what we focus on. It's what we eat, sleep and breathe. South Africa has had a challenging 18 months. How is your organization making a positive difference? Please mention how can uh, others get involved and support your efforts? Thanks very much. Yo, listen, we've had <laughs> we've had a challenging uh, a challenging you know eight or nine decades, but but sure, the last eighteen months has been pred uh, pred uh, you know, very difficult for us. And I think I think what we've seen is the rise of civil society in the form of many reputable uh, groups and organisations like ours. You've got many. You've got Gift of the Givers and uh, SA Food Forward. You've got ourselves and, and a plethora of these organisations. And I think. If anything, over the last 18 months, what, it, what has happened is um, our efforts are being recognized more by the general public because it's becoming more relevant to the general public. And I think that the, 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 the scars and the, and the deep inequalities that exist have, have also come to surface. So I think what we've done is, is uh, twofold. One is to make sure that we can grow our network. And that network is all geared around um, uh, bringing sustainable change. And the other thing is, um, is, to, is to activate citizens on the ground because this really is a, a team effort. You know, without the, without the, the hands in and the buy in from, from everyday South Africans, it's going to be an impossible task because even though you've got great organizations that exist, the, the challenges are vast. You know, we've currently got 30 million people that are starving in South Africa. We've got uh, deep uh, inequalities here. We've got uh, and unprecedented levels of, of, of crime and violence. And there's a number of challenges that we have. So it really does become a case of like, uh, you know, get as many hands on deck as possible so that we can start to turn the wheels of change. And I think as a result of our efforts over these, over these last, uh, you know, these last uh, few months, it really has uh, brought to surface the challenges and gotten people behind us. It's really gotten um, the country behind us, which has been incredible to, to witness. So. So we, we're definitely seeing um, uh, organizations such as, our, such as ourselves strengthen and, um, and, uh, and the impact is, is palatable, it certainly is palatable on the ground.
Would you know some of the key challenges uh, your organization by itself is facing? Uh, challenges like, you know, the ones we face are always, I, th I think people um, are not sure how to place us because we're an apolitical movement, right? We don't, we don't bash polit uh, political parties, we don't promote political parties, but there's no getting away from the fact that something needs to change at a political level in South Africa. And where our real uh, core fundamental focus is on the people, how, how do we find leadership within our people? So it's not about, it's not about uh, politics in the way that we understand politics. It really is about empowering people and to make sure that we can get people into positions of authority within our, within our structures and within our state that can help to drive change in South Africa. So I think one of the challenges is always going to be communication and getting people to understand what we are and what we represent and what we get to do. And then obviously the other challenges is always going to be resource. You know, resources are, are, are a challenge um, all over the place because there is such high demand and it's not just in South Africa, you know, globally we're faced with, with challenges and many countries that are first world countries are also battling uh, with levels of unemployment and, and homelessness and all these sorts of things. So I think people are spread a little bit thin, but certainly, you know, we, we've just, we've just obtained our, our PBO, PBO, which is a public benefit uh, organization status that allows us to get uh, um, uh, section 18 A certificates, which, which create tax breaks for, for, for organizations, for companies that have got their CSR budgets that they need to spend. So we're in a position now where we can go forward to these companies and start, start requiring funding from them, uh, start requesting funding from them, and then apply those to our, to apply those to our projects on the ground. You know, the, the challenges are always going to be those. It's always going to be what, what you are perceived to be and what you can affect on the ground with what you have available uh, at your disposal. We have had the opportunity to reflect on the pandemic and its impact. May you share key takeaways and anything you have learned over the past 18 odd months? I would say um, as much pain as this pandemic has caused and the, the total devastation of our economy and, and obviously the, the number of lives lost and, and all the challenges that are associated with, with, uh, with what's come out from this pandemic. Um, what we have seen is we've seen people rallying towards one another. I think we've seen people um, for the first time being exposed to, to some, of the, some of the stuff that perhaps has been hidden for a very long time, you know? Um, so we've, we've seen, a, we've seen a, an awakening. I think there's certainly been a, a social awakening and, uh, and, and certainly a camaraderie of people, people coming together, you know, uh, South Africans, everyday South Africans standing up, finding things to be optimistic about, finding ways to, to, um, to work around challenges that we face with on a daily basis, really uh, creating a um, sparking creativity. So, you know, all of these problems that have existed uh, have, have sort of pushed the boundaries in terms of finding solutions um, for, for the challenges that we find ourselves in. A lot of businesses have taken online, you know, they've, they've, they've been hurt, but they've sort of shifted, they've pivoted. We had an alcohol ban here, for example, in South Africa, and there was a, a, a brand new company. It was a, a gym, a craft gin distillery that was, uh, that had just launched. They were brand spanking new, and, and our president imposed the, the alcohol ban. And what this company did was they, they pivoted completely. They turned it into, into PPE. They turned it into uh, hand sanitizers. It was just little things like this. It's just incredible to see how people overcome their challenges, but, but more so how people have really rallied together. I think that's been the key takeaway for us. Great. How can excellent leadership in South Africa improve the country's perception globally? And how do you foresee this helping citizens? Well, the leadership needs to it needs to hold itself to account. You know, I think I think the the, the country is fully aware of of the, and I think the world is fully aware of the, the challenges that we have. We've got huge corruption. We've got cadre deployment. You know, the, the the challenges that we have are the fact that you've got people sitting in positions of of leadership that are completely unqualified. That they're not supposed to be there. Um, just uh, just as a matter of interest, there was a comparison between the you know the the. Um, the head of the military in the United States and the head of the military here in South Africa. The head of the military in the United States has had 40 years in, in, in active service. Ours has got a, a, a primary school diploma. So, you know, we, we cannot afford to be in a situation where we have people that are in positions of authority, people that are in uh, ministerial positions that don't know their role. Um, that's the first thing. So start to be, start to be accountable and make sure that we are, uh, make sure that we are um, getting the right people in. And then also, you know, we, we have, um, we have, we know for a fact that there are huge amounts of corruption happening within, within our political leaders right now. And there's process after process after process, but very little in the way of bringing people to book. We need to start seeing people being held to account. We need to see people facing the full might of the law. 
I think that's the only way you're going to start to restore the confidence of the nation behind behind uh, leadership. And certainly from a from a um, foreign investment standpoint, I think we need to start seeing these things happen as well. You know, we we know who the criminals are. We know what they've uh, we know what they've been up to. It's time to, for them to face the law and and for us to get the country back on track. Jared, do you have hope for South Africa's future? And if so, what makes you believe in this future? And how can we translate this hope into every corner of the country? You know, I remember being here uh, as a child, where, just before 1994. I remember sitting with my family and my family, uh, you know, the ANC was just about to come into power and Nelson Mandela was about to make his inaugural speech. And I remember my family sitting there saying, that's it, we're dead. You know, um, the ANC are going to kill us off and we finished. That was the... That was by and large the, um, the, the mentality and the emotional state of, of, of our country back then. And we didn't do that. South Africa didn't do that. We, we had good, strong leadership that called for unity. We, we invested into things like sports, uh, stuff that creates social cohesion and, and brings people together. We, um, we tried to open up, you know, unsuccessfully through some of, the, some of the failed policies. We tried to open up business and to make sure that the, the economy became more inclusive. And to some degree, that, that stuff did work. I think the bottom line, what I'm getting at here is that you can't write South Africa off because we've been through such a turbulent history that South Africa has, has, has um, become hardened uh, you know, through, through, its, um, through its challenges. We've, we've become more resilient. And, 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 and when, the, when the trouble really hits the fan, just like we've seen now a couple of weeks ago when we had these riots, It was the whole of South Africa across all different races coming together to protect what was theirs, protecting each other, protecting their communities, making sure that they were working together to, to, to hold back what was happening here. And when you look at that in its essence, you might have a very small, a very small part of the country, including our political leaders, a very small minority that is hell bent on crime and corruption and disruption. But what you've got is a silent majority of South Africa that includes all of us law abiding citizens, people that just want to see the best for our country. We are here. We are steadfast. We are doubling down. And I think what you have is an incredible will of the people to bring around real change. And as a result of the things that have happened over the past couple of weeks, it's actually intensified our will to, to, to speed things up, to, to get things working much, much faster. You can never discount South Africa because South Africa is a very special country. It's a very complex society faced with many challenges, but we are an incredible nation filled with amazing people, people that care, that love, I think we've got, you know, there's a picture that's painted on us that we're, we're a racially divided country. It's, it's not true. They, they are obviously, you're always going to have small pockets of people that have got differing opinions, but that's what happens when you're in a democratic society. You're going to have people and they're going to have views. You might not agree with those views. But as a whole, by and large, it's been incredible to see this country rally together. And I think as long as the people have some level of hope and are inspired to move forward and are inspired to take the next steps, and even if those next steps look like having uncomfortable conversations about the injustices of the past and the challenges that we face today, then those are the steps that we must take in order to move forward. But I know as long as we have the, the abundance of resources that we have and those resources based on, on mineral resources, agricultural resources and, and human resources as well, as long as we have all of those things going for us and we have the right leadership put into, into, into place in this country, South Africa, I think, will be the beacon of light to the world as it's been before. South Africa is well regarded throughout the world for what it's been able to do especially under the leadership of Nelson Mandela and the stuff that he managed to pull off us in South Africa when we, when we thought, you know, we were doomed. So, so you can never give up hope on South Africa. You know, she's a different animal. You know, we're a nation filled with, with a warrior spirit and, um, and, and, and a deep sense of pride for our country. Um, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You know, South Africans really, really love their, their home, you know, and we found this all the time. South Africans that have moved abroad, even though they, even though those decisions to move abroad might have been non-related to what's going on in the country. Maybe it was just opportunity-based, but people always have their eye on their home. You know, this, is, this is our home, and it's a, it's a beautiful place, and it's worth fighting for. Great. We would love to share your positive initiative and thoughts on our website and hope that uh, you will be happy for us to spread your word. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Let the light shine. Great. Thanks, Jared, for your time today, for your interesting input and hope uh, wish you all the best in your uh, future endeavors and helping others and making civil rights count thank you so much thanks <laughs>